you enjoy budget-friendly DIY design and decor, then make sure you hit that subscribe button so you know every time we upload a video. Hey you guys, welcome back to Lisa and Company. I am so, so excited for today's video because today is my first ever collab. I mean, my collab. This is the first time I've ever done this. So, I wanna be clear, this was not intended to be for Mother's Day, but it has kind of turned into a bit of a love letter to my mom. Here's the thing, she loves everything blue and white. So I had planned to do this blue and white DIY video for her so she would have some new decor for her place. And then I thought, wouldn't it be great if there was a whole bunch of us doing DIY in blue and white and she had the chance to see all kinds of blue and white inspiration as well as getting new decor for her place. So I reached out to a few of my favorite YouTubers here, people that I knew would do a great job on a blue and white collab. So today we have a playlist for you that includes Casey from Coffee With My Sunshine, Yami from The Latina Next Door, and my friend Sherry from Pretty Simple Sherry. These women have incredible content. I'm gonna make sure I link all their channels down below as well as their videos so you can hop over and see all the amazing content they have created in blue and white. With all that being said, I just wanna do a quick thank you to my mom. You know, when Mother's Day rolls around, it's a great opportunity for us to tell our moms how much we love and appreciate them. But I just gotta tell you while I'm sitting right here my mom is my biggest supporter. She's my rock. She is my number one cheerleader and she is the one who's not afraid to tell me when I'm doing something I shouldn't be doing, but also is always going to be the one who picks me up when I just can't figure out which way is up. So mom, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this video as well as my friend's videos and you get lots of great DIY inspiration. I can't wait till I can get over to your place and we can hang all this stuff up. I love you. First up, I am using the Cricut to create some great little coasters for my mom's living room. I guarantee you she's not even gonna use these. She's just gonna have them around where they look pretty. So I found this pattern in my Cricut design space and I'm cutting it out on some blue vinyl that came from Amazon and Urgh! weeding time. This might not look as bad as it felt, but let me tell you, my shoulders were aching by the time I finished weeding out all these teeny tiny pieces and putting back all the teeny tiny pieces that came off where they shouldn't have. But I do have these great glazed tiles, so I'm going to transfer it right on there and the ends definitely justified the means. I am thrilled with them. I think they're absolutely stunning and I know she's going to love them. Only three more to go. Ugh. This chopping board is actually one that I started a while back and didn't end up using like I thought. So I am going to spray it in this great chalked paint, which thank goodness the idea for this collab came early and I was able to get it before everything shut down. Now I had initially planned to put a couple of grain sack stripes on here. I thought it was the perfect shape. And then I remembered that I had this stencil. And what you may not know about my mom is that she loves bees and she has made it her mission to save the bees of the world. In fact, when she sends us a text, it always has a bee at the end. So we went over stenciling technique the other day. I will link that video down below because I explained it really carefully. Once that paint is dry, I'm gonna go over and give this a really good sanding. It takes away any of the texture from the stencil and it also smooths out that chalked paint beautifully. Anyone else think this table is getting out of control? I think I have a weekend project in mind where I clean this thing up. I'm going to finish this up with some white wax. It's from Fusion Mineral Paint. I have used it before on a couple of other projects and I absolutely love this stuff. It doesn't change the color so much as it just highlights what's there. 
I like to use a brush to put it on and brush it over the entire surface. And then once you have it covered, I just keep going over and over it and I find it burnishes it beautifully. I'm having a love affair with spray paint right now simply because I feel like it makes everything so much easier. I will say it takes a little longer to dry and I can't just throw my hair dryer on it like I do with some of the others. I do have to fill the holes on this cupboard door so that I can use it and I had already primed it before I spray painted it. So this cabinet door has a little bit of damage on it. So when I'm dry brushing, I'm gonna have to be really careful because if I hit the areas where that damage is, it's just gonna really, really highlight them. So I don't mind that this is gonna have a rustic, sort of really organic look to it, but I don't wanna highlight the yucky stuff, if that makes any sense whatsoever. I do get a little bit heavy handed with the dry brushing here, but I just take one of those dollar store wipes that I have on hand and just give it a slight wipe down anywhere where I think I had a little too much. Failing that, you can always hit it with a light sandpaper to sand it back and redo it and start again. All right, so now I need a jar because yes, we are gonna hang it on that cabinet door and fill it with beautiful white flowers. Now I did notice that this has a giant crack in it and I don't know if I bought it that way or if that happened in my disaster of a studio once I got it home. No, I am gonna use my linen white chalk paint, of course. This is right at the bottom of the can. I am so lucky that um, I tend to buy the white in twos because I use so much of it or I'd be in big trouble right now. But the point of telling you that was to tell you that when you get down to the bottom of the can, it's a little thicker, so it went on really well. Okay, back on track. Uh, <laughs> sorry, you guys. I have this great waxed twine that I got from Ikea back at Christmas and didn't even open. So I'm gonna wrap that around because you know what? I forgot to fill the holes on the cupboard door. So this way, between the twine and the flowers, you're not gonna be able to see them anyway. But seriously, some days I wonder where my brain is. All right, we're gonna attach this. I've already used E6000 and some hot glue to attach this collar plumbing thing. And yeah. I didn't let it sit long enough. So I have an idea that part of the reason this came apart is because the neck is smaller than the body. So I am gonna do a little repair here by using a tumbling tower block to lift that slightly off. And I'm not worried about painting it because again, you're not gonna be able to see it. And you'll see what I mean when we're all done. All right, I am gonna skip right to the next one and you'll see how good this looks in the reveal at the end. Right along to DIY number four, we are using these hearts that we have left over from Valentine's Day, a frame from an old thrift haul, and since I couldn't get scrapbook paper or really pretty napkins like I intended, I just printed these right off my computer. This frame cost me a whole dollar way back in one of my thrift hauls. It's gonna get a coat of the linen white chalked paint and we are going to make a beautiful but super simple piece of art out of this. All right, I am gonna use a great technique here that I have learned from a fellow YouTuber. So I've put Mod Podge on one side and really pressed those down. Then once they're dry, trim them off and use sandpaper going from top down or side to side and it does a beautiful job of trimming off the edges. You don't have to worry about using a knife or scissors and making it perfect. Jennifer at A Little Bit of Calm and Crazy is the one who taught us all how to do this and it is a fantastic tip. Now I did go ahead and distress the frame again and I am gonna use some really great adhesive here. This is a weld bond adhesive. I got it a little while back and I don't remember to use it as often as I should, but it does a great job at stuff like this. So we're just gonna put these hearts down, make sure they are spaced just so. And I think this is gonna look beautiful on a wall in my mom's living room. Are you ready to see them all together? Here we go. I have hung them here in my hallway 
just because I can't get over to my mom's right now to hang them up for her, but you can bet just as sure as I can, I will be over there. So let's break this down and see exactly what we have here. So first of all, this hanger. I am so happy with the way it came out. I wasn't sure if that blue was a little bright at first, but I think with the dry brushing, the white jar and the white flowers, it came out really beautifully. I just love the texture on this piece. The little hearts, well, like I said, they're just a little something to add to a beautiful gallery while she has in the living room, and I think they're gonna add just a nice touch. The coasters, well, the coasters are a nice accessory, and like I said, she'll never use them. And I have a feeling that the bee chopping board is going to be her favorite. Thanks so much for stopping by Lisa and company, you guys. We are having a great time getting to know you guys, leaving your comments and telling us what you're doing during this quarantine. Don't forget to check out these other videos. Don't forget to stop by Facebook and Instagram for some extra content and to see what we're up to when we're not making videos. And we'll see you next time. Take care.